I see you're carrying an old-fashioned artifact. Uh, you've got <laughs> my old business. That's right. Uh, so this is a book, um, a science fiction book for you, Tim. Uh, we got a bunch of uh, science fiction authors to come spend time at uh, Microsoft Research and write about the future. Um, and so here it is for you. It's all right, sort of, I'm gonna, looking I, forward to that. I love science fiction. And this fiction. book's going to be free on all the e-stores, I think, next week for all of you to go take a look at as well. Uh, it's got some fun stories. So one of the things that obviously um, it does envision is this future of AI as it impacts society. Uh, the one thing that is, I would say, just so awesome to see is how universal design Mm -hmm. combined with AI can actually solve some of the accessibility issues uh, that plague us today. Uh, so that's one. The other one is we are, of course, nowadays way way into emotions and AI helping detect even emotions amongst us. Um, so just imagine writing a memo which actually helped you not just carry emotion in written form, but it even detected emotions when people were reading it. And I thought, wow, that's the future of writing. Wow, that's... Uh a little eerily reminiscent <laughs> of, of the movie Her, so, That's right. you know, where, <laughs> we, uh, but, uh, you know, let's actually start with agents. I wasn't planning to start uh, on, on that end of things, but, uh, you know, there's a remarkable UI transition coming, it seems to me, you know, where it's, it's not just, it, you know, it's the Internet of Things, uh, you know, many, many more devices uh, starting to have affordances for, you know, effectively what we used to call computing, which, uh, but also, uh, you know, speech becoming a first class uh, sort of interface. What's your take on that? You know, how, how are you thinking about that at Microsoft? Yeah, I mean, I... You know, when you and I talked, I guess, um, whatever, six, seven months ago, yeah. I described it as the third runtime. Um, and I think that's what it is, which is, from a personal computing perspective, obviously the first time we had a PC operating system, then there was the browser. Mm -hmm. I think agent is the third runtime in that context, which is, what do runtimes um, do or application operating systems do? They have resource management on one side, and then they have uh, application models on the other side. And the agent is a new app model. Uh, today, the fact that you have either on the phone a bunch of icons or you go to a bunch of websites or you have apps on the PC, what if you can transcend that with an agent uh, where, in fact, text in many cases or speech becomes the new UI um, and you interact with applications using text or speech and you can do complex tasks that span applications. Uh, it's right. like browsing the web, but it's different because you're browsing the app ecosystem yeah. without invoking each application. Uh, and I think we're in the early stages of it. Uh, us and uh, Siri and Google now, so Cortana, Siri, Google and now all have models. You can't forget Amazon. Either, oh, Amazon. With, uh, with Alexa. And Alexa and yeah. then Facebook and what, uh, I think the race is on multiple, you know, this great innovation happening all around. Uh, but these runtimes will develop into platforms both, that means there's a new application model, that means applications, quote unquote, will publish into these agents. There will be a new UI. Yeah. Uh, we are definitely thinking a lot about what is text as UI. I think WeChat in China has shown uh, what that could look like. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because it isn't just speech, it is sometimes just texting to these things. Yeah. Absolutely, and uh, the bot interface between essentially um, an app and uh, a messaging front end uh, yeah. is also another part of this agent technology. One of the questions I have there, there's several questions I have about uh, this sort of new agent layer as a platform. And one of them is that there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of platform infrastructure that's required to do this right. For example, location. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I was really, struck uh, recently when I you know, realized that I could put, attach my shopping list to locations and say, you know, next time I'm at Whole Foods, remind me to buy currants. That's right. You know, that's kind of astonishing, first off, you know, because you, th you, you think about the infrastructure that requires, you know, it means your, your device your is, fence, yep. is, is paying attention in real time to where you are and remembering something, you know, and, and that's just a touch. Now, how do we make that platform technology, uh, you know, not that many companies have all the pieces of that. And how are you thinking about making that available to developers so that they can 
invent apps that have that brilliant user interface that just makes the interface disappear and stuff happens. Right, I mean, it, the approach we are taking is how do we open up? Like, for example, Cortana has a first class notion of reminders, which yeah. can be geofenced. So, yeah. your shopping cart kind of example, or the shopping list example is a good one. So, the idea would be that you would be able to build applications that take advantage of the various the UI scaffolding as well as the services yeah. so that you can plug in, just like how you would have written an app in the past, which was invoked. Yeah. You would now essentially have events that happen in the agent that trigger essentially right. your algorithms, your application, uh, or even your UI. Uh, yeah. So one of the things we don't think of is it's only always our UI on the top. The agent should work to surface your UI whenever it's relevant. Uh, yeah. So it's your data, your UI, and you've got to build this out like a browser was built out. That's right. Um, yeah, and it seems to me that, that uh, I find one of the things I've seen in the, the platform or uh, that's sort of shaping up is there's an awful lot of inbound, well, we'll surface your app, your content in our interface versus we'll provide you know, platform capabilities that let you use the intelligence that we have. For, you, know, you think about any kind of these new next generation logistics apps. Uh, you know, there's a lot of data science in that, yep. you know, uh, figuring out how to route people, figuring out where people are in real time. And, are you guys doing any of that work for uh, you know, corporate yeah, customers? No, or are you absolutely. thinking that way of, of, of how we're going to build out yeah, I mean, the infrastructure of this next generation of apps? Yeah, I mean, to the first part of yours, which is, uh, are you aggregating other people um, applications and directing attention to them from your UI versus yeah. letting others. That itself, just in Cortana, I think it's going to be defined by the different business models at play. I mean, there is at least um, three different business models at play today, right? There is the advertising business model. And so if you're in the ad business, uh, you clearly want to be uh, monetizing you driving traffic to apps. So that's, yeah. I think, will be, anyone who's, you know, thinks comes from there is going to you know, skew their agent to that. Someone who comes from more our perspective, which is either on the device side or subscriptions, uh, will take a different approach, which is we'll be more comfortable perhaps of taking the apps from the third parties and surfacing them. Uh, yeah. UI, because we monetize differently. So I think it'll be a more of a business model um, that'll define, I think, what happens mm -hmm. to these agents, which is interesting. So uh, that kind of uh, brings up Sun Tzu, you know, attack your enemy where uh, he is weak and you are strong. Uh, there's going to be a battle of business models here as well as a battle of technology. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And to your second part of the question, which is, if you look at AI machine learning in particular, I mean, this statistical machine learning is changing pretty much every field. And that's where we definitely have a unique role to play as a platform company. Mm -hmm. uh, because what we did, for example, is all the learning from both I mean, everything from Bing to what we did with Kinect and image uh, processing mm -hmm. and uh, speech recognition, took the applied machine learning harness and just put it into Azure as Azure ML. Um, yeah. And so I kind of go back all the way to what Visual Basic did for client server development. Yeah. I would love for us to do for essentially advanced machine learning yeah. uh, and democratize it because there are not that many, you know, there are not that many Carnegie Mellon PhDs going around uh, yeah. to go build all the machine learning apps. No, I, I, I'm really impressed with Azure ML. It really is, and your Visual Basic analogy is great. It really is democratizing machine learning for a and whole class of customers who don't have, you know, a high-powered data science team but can get access effectively to a high That's, power data science and we're now seeing it see there's this one company out of germany um uh thyssen krupp which is an elevator company it's fascinating what they've done is you know they they moved from being an elevator company to becoming a SaaS company which does predictive maintenance on elevators that's right um so they built all of this uh on azure but the more interesting thing is the business model transformation so now once they've transitioned uh to essentially monetize the difference in service contracts between say elevators in hospitals versus elevators in office parks because obviously people care yeah. more about actually fixing an elevator before anything wrong happens yeah. uh, and they'll pay for it, uh, they now are saying, look, my, maybe I don't need to even just monetize my elevators or my, do service my elevators. I'll actually have my service people who are there in all regions 
Uh, that's my competitive advantage. Yeah. So the fact that their business model has changed, yeah. their logistics is now all managed through a cloud service. Yeah. So an elevator can break down anywhere. If they get notified, they know that they should just send a service person. It's kind of an Uber-like infrastructure. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's so, pretty fascinating. Uh, let's come back to the theme of this session, which is augmentation. Uh, and, and really this notion of how do we augment workers to make them more productive in the 21st century? Can you talk about how you're thinking about that? Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty central part of what we do. I mean, we describe ourselves as a productivity and platform company. Um, and so when we think about productivity, uh, what, is, what does it fundamentally come down to? If you say the two factors of production, or three factors of production is land and um, labor and capital, uh, then we want to make sure that we are driving those three factors of production. Mm -hmm. So for example, I had definitely come from the point of view that it's augmentation. This is the race with the machine. Uh, to me, AI is, is going to happen. It's technology that's inevitable. The question is, how do we design in the human in the loop so that the, the human gets more leverage mm -hmm. because the organization gets leverage both out of labor and capital and the mm -hmm. human gets more out of leverage out of their time. That's yeah. the scarce commodity. So whenever I think about what all the things, Cortana, it is about providing an intelligent agent that drives your productivity. Right. That means your labor output, that means your labor return should be higher. Uh, second, for me, even for example, say, take something like Skype Translate. Mm -hmm. uh, it is about reducing transactional costs uh, between people who need to go do business across language boundaries. So it's not just about having, you know, I know in this conference you're using Skype quite a bit, that's fantastic, but what if you could even invite foreign speakers and have a great conference that's great. Uh, without language boundaries? So that's about first the the f uh, boundaries of the firm can be broken and transactional costs can be brought down. Another one that I'm very uh, focused on is just this notion of time and how do we get a feedback loop so that our attention, which is the scarce commodity, can be applied more wisely by each one of us individually and by organizations mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that we can get more out of every moment of our life. Uh, so we have this one um, product called Delve Analytics. So the idea is to sort of you know, reason over all, for example, your calendar data. Who do you spend time with? How do you spend it? Who do you communicate with? Uh, and what if you had that assist? Re because it, you can even reason about your projects and tasks because you have them on your wonder list. So you could even come back and say, you know what, this is the top thing on your wonder list and maybe you should spend time with people who know something about that project. Yeah. Um, and so thinking of how AI can yeah. ultimately be augmenting our productivity yeah. so that we can get a return. Uh, that means ultimately, you know, I would say anyone from an Uber driver to a, uh, a white collar worker is actually getting a higher return on their time. Yeah, I think that's, that's great. Uh, if people have questions for Satya, you can come up to the mics. And while you're doing that, I want to ask you about HoloLens and actually just the, in general uh, how you think about uh, you know, virtual reality, augmented reality in our future. They're all a very, very interesting and in fact, VR and AR are actually pretty distinct. Uh, and you know, there could be just because you can have a fully occluded VR and then you can put some cameras and then try and mix those things too. And uh, I think we'll see a good... Uh, Where are you placing your bet? AR. Yeah. Uh, VR, although, you know, for example, I think both Oculus and Steam will be tethered to Windows PCs when uh, yeah. they come out, rather than their phone scenario, which is you know, going to be the predominant VR scenario is going to be actually at least next year PC-based, and we absolutely want to support that in a big way. Um, but I think AR is where we will do our unique work. And the reason why I'm excited about AR is for one fundamental reason, which is, at least here is my interpretation of our computing history, which is so far throughout our history, we have sort of done these mirror worlds, right? Which is we have taken something that's existed in the analog, created digital metaphors, um, and been very successful. Desktop right. is a good example of that. 
Uh, but what if, for the first time now, we can take digital artifacts and put them into the analog world? Uh, it's a new medium. Um, yeah. And we'll learn. And we, you know, the NASA example that we sort of showed, where the NASA scientists always, this is actually, you know, speaks to, I think, all the themes here. Uh, the NASA scientists put a rover on Mars, but they always dreamt of being on Mars themselves. Mm -hmm. And for the first time now, they can take the output of rover as a holographic output and put it into their office. So you see a NASA scientist sitting in their office and, in fact, moving the rover on their PC because it's robotically mm -hmm. controlled, and they can then see the output, which is the Mar Martian terrain, right in their office and inspect it. Now that's, that's to me, a fantastic example. It, it really is. I, I am super excited about the potential of augmented reality. Did I see somebody at the mic there, over here? Yes, thank you. Um, a question about culture. Um, we look in our history books and see pictures of footmen in front of the first cars. Or we took a long time before the ampersand symbol or dot com actually meant something at a societal level. What do you think are some of the new tools, not just tools, but metaphors that our culture will need to where ordinary people can live in partnership with big data and AI? Hmm. What is the equivalent of, a, of the dot com idea that people can, uh, can grok to where AI becomes something to access and get what you need as opposed to this mysterious thing. Just no, it's like a great question. In fact, we debated when we did, and so it's fascinating you bring up that question because we debated Cortana, right? When we said, oh, we, uh, should we give this thing a personality or not? Should, should it be anthropomorphic or should be someone that you can relate to socially. And so we chose to give it a name. And in fact, now we're even working on sort of how do we make sure that it can take on the cultural attributes of the different parts of the world uh, that it would operate in. And so I think, you know, at least the thing that first comes to my mind just listening to your question is that I come out and say something like that is what AI would represent, uh, for me at least, which is an agent that becomes my window into how I can interact with, quote unquote, the ambient intelligence that is there around us. Uh, there's another example of what we're doing. There's a, a project called Shao Eyes in China, and in mm -hmm. fact, now we have taken it to Japan as well, uh, which is, in fact, very much like uh, the movie Her, uh, which is a chatbot uh, which, with AI uh, in it. And so again, it has a personality. So we are definitely trying to go there where we want to give it uh, a social context that you can relate to. And, and so we'll see how it all progresses, but at least that's where I come out. Thank yeah. you. All right, uh, you know, I, I think we're, we're very close to out of time. There was somebody over there, but they've disappeared. So I'm gonna just, uh, give one small answer to that too. Remember when people first started wearing headsets and you'd see somebody talking to the air and you thought it was weird and after a while you kind of got what it was? I think we're going to have that same experience with people talking to yeah. uh, agents. You know, you'll kind of go, oh, they're just having a conversation with their agent, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, I, I, mean I, I catch myself now doing it. I mean, hey, Cortana is just, you know, part of my vocabulary and um, I think uh, that becoming more pervasive and more useful, I think, is the pursuit. That's right. Well, with that, thank you very much, Satya. Thank you so much. Uh, a lot to think about here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Satya. Thanks.